guys, how's it going? Right, today we're going to do a bit of a mod on our uh, on our Mega Drive, or in this case, I've actually got a US Sega Genesis here, so um, American viewers should certainly recognise one of these. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at overclocking this. We're going to make it run faster than what it was intended to. Now, there's a few things I need to point out with this. Um, firstly, um, I have to give all credit and all thanks to Thomas3120. He um, he gave me the push to do this, and um, to be honest, he's already done a video on this. He's well covered it. Um, and actually, I really hummed and hard about even making this video because, you know, like I say, he's already done it. Why reinvent the wheel? Um, but in this case, sort of after doing the mod, um, I thought, well, there's a couple of little things I could maybe mention. Um, but yeah, no, by all means, um, definitely big shout out to Thomas, thank you so much for the help, the, the guidance, uh, just everything. Um, really, really awesome guy, uh, guy and if you guys have been over to his channel, um, you need to. He's, a, he's an awesome dude. So, um, What we're going to do is um, we're going to fit a 10 megahertz oscillator into this. So we're going to make it run at 10 megahertz. Now, um, there's some guys out there that have um, got these up to 25 megahertz and even higher, but from what I've read and what I've found personally, 10 megahertz is a nice, safe number. Every game works as it should, there's no troubles. Um, and all this modification does is it gets rid of slowdown. So, um, as Thomas showed in his video, um, if you're playing, say, Sonic, um, you've picked up, I don't know, 70, 80 rings, and then you hit a bad guy instead of the game slowing down, um, it just, yeah, works as it should. Um, and even games like um, Thunder Force and that benefit from it. And one I found myself is, um, is Curse, um, which is the on the, come out in the Japanese Mega Drive. Now that game is slow. It, it's slow right out of the box. It's terrible. But with the overclock, it, it actually makes it kind of playable. So um, definitely, definitely worth having a go at this. Um, the scary part, though, you do have to. Um, work on one of the legs on the actual CPU itself so be careful, um, be static safe and you know be confident. Um, now there's a couple of things I want to point out just from what I've read on the net and what I've seen some other mods do. Now um, this one what we're going to use is one of these nice little 4 pin um, 10 megahertz crystals or um, if you actually look for an oscillator you'll find this slightly easier to find. Um, you have to use one of the four pins. You can't do this with one of the two pin um, variety. And uh, when you do a bit of a search, two pin is what you're going to find straight up. But um, I think DigiKey um, have these. Um, but by all means, and I hope you don't mind, Thomas. Uh, but um, go and have a talk to Thomas about where you can find these really available. He actually was kind enough to um, arrange this one for me. So again, big thanks, mate. Things you need to know. Um, if you overclock this machine, um, it will not work anymore with the Mega CD or Sega CD um, and it won't work with the 32X. So your add-ons unfortunately go out the window when you do this. Um, but before you hit the stop button, um, it's okay because the way we're going to do it is we're going to make it so you can still flick back to the factory speed. So um, if you go back to your 7 MHz clock, your Mega CD, your 32X, all your add-ons all work perfectly. It's only when it's overclocked. Okay, there's one more thing I've got to tell you before you um, start, start heating up your soldering iron and getting ready to do this mod. Now, when they made the Mega Drive, um, the very early original models, like the, the original Japanese ones, I think, um, some of them come out with what was called a Cygnetics CPU. I think that's how you say it. Um, instead of a Motorola CPU. Now, you can tell them apart because you can see this one here has got Motorola's little symbol on it, a little uh, M, looks like cat's ears or something. Um, the Cygnetics one has got a big S and a square, kind of like, like a Superman symbol sort of thing. Now, here's a kicker. Um, the Cygnetics CPUs were like a knockoff chip. They had the same features and functionality as a Motorola chip and they did actually operate at the same speed. but. Um, because they were a knockoff chip, they weren't actually. A knockoff's probably the wrong way to put this, guys, so I hope I'm not causing any offense here. Um, but they were basically a bit inferior. They, um, even operating at the same speed as Motorola, they just didn't quite have the same sort of grunt. And um, not wanting to start any wars here, but if you remember back in the day, there used to be big arguments about um, 
in the, in the computer world, the um, Intel and AMD CPUs, how um, Intel was, I don't know, say 2 gigahertz, and the AMD CPU was also 2 gigahertz, but the Intel was just that little bit faster, even though they were the same speed. So, why I'm telling you all this anyway is um, the Motorola chips you can quite happily overclock. Um, yeah, they work, it's no problem. The Psychonetics ones, however, um, basically them operating at 7 megahertz, they were kind of, that was their max capacity, and if you try and overclock one of those, you might find there isn't any more headroom in it and it starts glitching and playing up and doing all sorts of strange things. So, bottom line is, if you don't have a Motorola CPU, um, be very careful about trying this mod because honestly your um, mileage is going to vary. Um, it might work beautifully, you might never have another trouble, but don't do this mod in any fashion that you can't undo it, as in you can't put it back to factory if you've got um, a Psychonetic CPU because it may not work and from what I've read, most don't. Um, so, but on the good side though, apparently there aren't a lot of guys out there that have got them, they were a pretty limited run and um, it's because Sega thought they were a great way to save a bit of money until they released the first Sonic game and it ran horribly. If you've got one of those CPUs, apparently you should notice that um, that Sega, sorry, Sonic 1 in particular um, runs a lot slower than maybe your friend's Mega Drive does. You get a lot more slowdown in it. So um, anyway, um, we'll get on with the mod. What I'm going to do is I've just got a little bit of Vero board and if you see closely here, a little bit blurry, sorry guys, but um, all I've done is I've just come along and just basically cut a track across the middle. Um, and you'll see how I put that all together in a minute. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do, just a little bit different, is with the, um, I'm actually going to take the power LED out of this and I'm going to replace it with one of our red green ones and basically I'm going to use, um, and here's a change for the new year, here's a change, I'm going to use a double pole double throw switch, normally I use a single pole um, double throw but yeah in this case double pole double throw, throw, ugh. double pole double throw. So when you're doing a search for these parts, uh, DP, DT, double pole, double throw is what you've got to look for. Um, and basically what that does is it looks the same as our regular switch, but you'll see it's actually got six contacts on it instead of the three. And it's effectively like flicking two switches at once. And um, what we're going to do is when the switch is in one orientation, so the factory speed, um, the light will be green. And when it's the other way, when it's overclocked, um, the light will be red. Okay, so uh, just having a closer look at our little board here. As I was saying before, basically you can see I've got just a little bit of Vero board here and I've just cut straight along the middle. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our, um, our little oscillator here and I'm just going to sit that just on the back and I'm going to have it so that the uh, legs poke up on either side of this divider. Just when you're um, working with things like these um, oscillators or crystals or whichever terms more comfortable for you but um, just when you're working with these always just make sure you don't keep the heat on too long they are quite a delicate sort of a device and um, what we're going to do now that we've got our oscillator mounted is we're just going to attach some wiring and um, just make sure that with your wiring uh, we'll cover this again anyway but with your wiring uh, make sure the lengths are quite short don't plan on mounting this little board on the other side of the Mega Drive, it's got to be very close to your switch. And from what I've read, and I wouldn't incline to agree with it, you want to keep your cable lengths about three inches at the most. So keep it nice and short, nice and close, because it reduces the amount of interference the cable's going to get. Um, and yeah, just with clock speeds, yeah, just keep it short. <laughs> All right, so we've got that in place. Now we just get some wiring attached. All right, so uh, we've got our um, oscillator attached to the board. Now, what we're going to do now is we're just going to add the uh, wires for our 5 volt feed and for our ground. Now you see, um, with all these oscillators, um, you'll notice that there's one square corner. See how there's a bit of a square there? And you also see up in here, just see it, there's a little bit of a dot there. That indicates pin 1. Now. Um, Basically here's how it goes, so it goes pin 1 is here, pin 2 is over at this side, pin 3 is down here, and pin 4 is over here. So, we're 
We don't use pin 1, so forget about him. Use him as a point of reference. Um, pin 2 though, that's where our 5 volts is going to go. Into pin 2. And uh, pin 3, down here, this is where our ground's going to go. So, up in pin 2, we're going to be attaching um, two wires. Um, one's going to be our 5 volts coming in, and the other one's going to be our 5 volts going out for our LED. And we're going to do the same um, for our ground. We are, um, we're going to have one coming in for our ground, and the other one's going to be going out for the ground again for the LED. So, um, what we'll do is we'll just poke it in, and then um, flip it over, and then just give it a little bit of solder. And because these boards, um, the copper tracks, go uh, straight across, you can see why I put this divider in there because we don't want our 5 volts to go over and our ground to go over, you know. Um, that's why we've cut this big track through. And now we're just going to get our ground attached. So again, we do the same thing where we just basically just poke it down in there, flip it over, and just give it a little bit of solder. Okay, now what we need to do uh, is get a wire attached for our feet out. Okay, so now we're going to add our, um, our signal wire, or the wire that's going to carry our new 10 MHz clock. So I'm going to use a blue cable, you use whatever colour suits you. Um, and this goes into pin 4, so it's on the same side as where the, um, where the 5 volts is, and it's dead opposite the... Um, ground. So I'll just sit that in there, turn it over, and you'll notice what I do with these wires when I poke them through is if you give them just a little bit of a bend, um, it actually helps them sit in there because you, you might find that they can sort of wander around a little bit. And um, you don't want too much exposed wire on the top side. So now I've got our bead sitting in there, just quickly get some solder to that. Okay, so you can see here I've just quickly added another ground wire, um, and, and this extra ground wire is just for the ground for our um, changing LED. And the other thing we need to add is a resistor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the most of our, um, our Vero board here, and basically I'm going to set the resistor in the same line as our um, 5 volts. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump it over to the next track. It's just a little bit fiddly here, like that, okay? Now this is a uh, 220 ohm resistor, and this is just going to cut our voltage down for our LED. And then just to get really tricky here, is now I'm going to put in, I'm going to put in a white wire for this, onto there. So, and our white wire is going to carry our maybe two or three volts, three volts probably, three and a half maybe, out for our LED. All right. So not that easy looking at the bottom of it to see what's going on, but just make sure too that you know you don't bridge any of the tracks across because uh, that won't be good. So yeah, just looking at it again, you can see our five volts comes in, hits the resistor, goes across to the next track, and then carries out in our white wire. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to. Very carefully give this a little, just a bit of a tweak there. I'm just going to lower its profile just a little bit. And what I'm going to do now is I can basically wrap this all up in insulation tape, um, which, you know, isn't the prettiest, but because this is going to be knocking around inside our, um, our Mega Drive, we don't, or our Genesis in this particular case, you know, we don't want it to short anything out. So, wrap this up in tape and uh, then we're ready to get fitting.